For Brad Funk of Langham, Saskatchewan, horses play a significant role in almost everything he does. He runs a harness making business called The Livery Stable and also has a herd of perchant horses, including this pair of half sisters named Babe and Lady. Okay. I use horses to give rides for kids and I use horses for weddings and funerals and, and to do my own work around the yard and my chores and feeding up and stuff like that. Then they're also my toys. I don't own a snowmobile or a quad. You know, they're, I've got 13 horse-drawn vehicles, so that's what I pick from. One of Funk's horse-drawn vehicles is his chore sled, which he has equipped with a winch for round bale work. The round bales mount, uh, they'll just tip onto that, uh, those teeth there so they don't come off. We'll pull them over there and uh, unload them, and then when the, when the bale is off, you cluck the team ahead a couple of steps and they'll stand the bale up on end so you can throw the feeder over it. Funk has been interested in horses for most of his life. At the age of 14, his parents gave him some leather working tools and he's been making harness pretty much ever since. He made the harness being worn here by Babe and Lady, which sells for about $3,200 with the collars included. It's what we call a parade harness, just means it's got lots of spots and chrome and stuff on it. But it's still a good sturdy work harness, just dressed up a little and kind of dirty right now. Since Funk has years of experience working with horses, he has developed a strong understanding of what works and what doesn't work when it comes to harnesses. He makes them in four different sizes. There's four basic sizes of harness. There's miniature, pony, horse sized, and draft sized. And if I know that, what size their horses are, I've, I've got a pretty good idea of how to make the harness fit. And a harness has lots of adjustment too. You know, they're not just one size, they'll, they'll adjust quite a bit. Right now, Funk is using his draw knife to cut a piece for the back pad for a harness. Of course, in order to produce a good quality harness, you have to start out with a good quality piece of leather. Harness leather has to be canned with a lot of oils and waxes in it. It's got to be fairly rugged and weatherproof. It's not like saddle leather or shoe leather or any other kind of leather. It's, it's a special tan. Here, Funk is working on the harness leather with a skiver, which is similar to using a planer on a piece of wood. He's bringing down the thickness to where he wants it so the harness will be as light as possible, but still be strong enough for long-term durability. After the skiving is complete, he applies a dye to finish the raw edges. There's oil dye and an alcohol-based dye. For the most part, I use the alcohol base because it's uh, practically instant drying. Funk runs the leather through a creasing machine, which was originally patented back in 1867. He says this is an important step in creating a long-lasting, eye-catching harness. It burnishes the edges. It'll give me a stitch line and a pattern on here. And it also perfects your cut. So, I mean, you're, I'm cutting by hand, which you saw, and, and, you know, it's nearly perfect, but when you run it through here, it's, it's got to be perfect. In order to line up the various pieces for sewing, Funk hammers in a few harness tacks. He does the actual sewing with a manual sewing machine. He has tried electric machines but prefers this manual unit because it's a lot more precise. For Funk, precision matters a lot more than speed in creating the level of quality he is known for. This is a, uh, just a plain work style back pad. They come in pairs. This is what the what it looks like when we're all done. And the hardware is added and you put a good heavy felt pad underneath of it. One of the things that makes Funk's operation stand out from the competition is that all his harness making equipment is manually operated. When the power goes off, I'm still working. I gotta actually have a propane lantern that throws pretty good light and I have worked for eight straight hours here in the dark. In addition to making harness from scratch, Funk also spends a significant amount of his time doing harness repair work. You know, it's generally a lot of harness these days is, is uh, you know, guys got it from their dad or out of somebody's barn and some of it's 100 years old. A leather harness will last 100 years if you look after it, but, you know, it's, it's old stuff. Stuff that has some age on it and the britchin, which is the part that goes around the horse's rear end, is generally the lightest, where the lightest straps are, so that's generally what breaks first. 
Funk has harnessed buying customers across Western Canada, which is more than enough to keep him busy. Making a harness can take up to a month, depending on whether it's the fancier parade harness or the more basic work harness.